Hi guys. So today we're going to be taking you through the Acara Cube. It's available from Amazon, uh, links in the description below. It's a very unique Zigbee based product that has a multi-channel input device uh, with the ability to uh, monitor and transfer various sensors back when the device is slid, knocked. It does a 90 degree flip, 180 degree flip, um, it can be shaken, it can be dropped, or it can be rotated. And there can be associated uh, automations with any of those actions. The device is very well supported uh, via the user community with an extensive number of templates that have been created for it. Due to the extensive number of uh, inputs that it can record and track and have associations with it, there are templates in existence that run from 24 actions associated with movements as described from the actual cube all the way up to 69 different permutations of the uh, inputs making it a very comprehensive and complex device or alternatively a very simple device but we'll get to that later on so we're going to start off with an unboxing of the actual device itself then we'll move forward into the pairing of the device, which is simple on this one. It's uh, not one of the more complicated ones. Then we'll move across into automations and templates with the fundamentals of this device with so many different permutations that are available. And then we'll round up at the end and give you my thoughts on the device and whether it should you should go out and buy it or stick it on your Christmas list. So as of November, 2022, there is actually a new Acara T1 Pro Cube that has been released. There are some known issues with this one, with pairing it to Home Assistant via whatever coordinator under ZHA. We are getting one of these in, so as soon as it arrives, we will do a uh, review and give you some feedback on the actual setup and the functionality of the new Acara T1 Pro Cube. So let's get into it. So I've gone across into my home assistant. I'm going to settings and I'm going to go into uh, devices. I'm going to click down into add a new integration. I'm going to select my Zigbee devices and it's now in pairing mode looking for the device. I'm going to press the button on the Acara Cube and hold it down for the 10 seconds as per the manual. Um, some of the other ones actually take multiple hits or multiple presses. Um, but this one you just hold down for 10 seconds and then you release. As you can see, it's now started doing the interview process. Now the device is actually ready to use. We need to rename our cube. So in this case, we'll just call it cube and we'll put it into the lounge. Now we're going to go into settings and we're going to go into automations and we're going to go into blueprints. Discover more blueprints. We're going to go into search and we're going to go into advanced search and we're going to search for Acara Cube. Now I'm going to suggest that we go for the 69 and I'll explain why in a minute. If we go into this selection here, links in the description below, you can see that this automation is made for ZHA. It supports 69 actions and it gives you a list of the different actions. We can press import, open the link. The blueprint is now ready to be imported. We can preview the import and we can import. And we can now see here is our magic cube. Now for this automation to work, there is a helper required. A helper is something that stores piece of information and provides it into other automations. So if we move across into settings, we go into devices, helpers and we create a helper now we need to create a number helper and we just need to create press create now if we go back into our automations blueprints here's our cube we can now create an automation 
pick up on the device, which we've called Cube, and pick up on the helper, Cube helper. So for the purposes of the demonstration and expediency, uh, this is one I've created earlier. So we've got our magic cube picked. We've got our selected face, which is our Cube helper, which is a numeric value. And as you can see, there are 69 in actual fact, um, actions that you can associate from flip cube 90 degrees, flip cube 180 degrees, etc., etc. For the purposes of the demonstration, we were going to action on side one when it is knocked, uh, which means to pick up the cube and tap it onto the table. Uh, we will activate this um, spare room left lamp. When the cube is rotated to the left, which means in an anti-clockwise direction, it will decrease the spare room left lamp brightness. And likewise, when it's rotated to the right in a clockwise uh, direction, as you're looking at side one, it will increase the light. So as per the cube helper with face one upwards, if we tap once, we should see the light turn on. If we tap again, we'll hear the light turn off. If we tap it again, turn on. If we rotate anti-clockwise with face one upwards, as per our automation, the light will decrease. If we rotate clockwise, the light will increase. So, to sum up about the Akara Cube, uh, what do I think? Well, hats off to Akara. It's a unique and innovative uh, product. It's simple to use and simple to configure. Uh, hats off to them to making it a Zigbee protocol, um, which is open. So it can be used with an Akara hub, but it's also open to other applications like Home Assistant as well. It's inexpensive to buy, relatively speaking, in comparison to the sophistication inside of it. The battery life on it can be questionable. As I've mentioned in previous videos, uh, on setting this up, it went from 100% down to around about 60% uh, very quickly. But saying that, it has been uh, sitting at around about 60% regardless of usage for a period of time. So that might just have been a one-off with a battery that had been sitting around for a long period of time. Um, the biggest one for me is around the partner approval factor for it. 69 different actions associated with the cube with sliding, knocking, twisting, turning, faces, etc., can be very daunting. Um, I'd highly recommend uh, actually labeling the faces and labeling the functionality on the actual faces itself. Otherwise, your partner is going to get very frustrated very quickly, as you will as well, uh, as into what controls what. So think about your user cases first, keep it simple to start with, and build the complexity over a period of time. Akara have also made their new product around this one called the Akara T1 Pro. We'll be doing a review of that shortly. And that looks to improve and on the original uh, cube, which is demonstrated inside of this tutorial. But on top of that, they've actually listened to people and actually um, made the changes to it so that it's actually a much better product. Again, um, future reviews on that one coming up shortly. So should you, should you buy it? Uh, yes, however, Think about your user cases first. Make sure you uh, keep it simple to start with. Inform everybody in the house of what you're doing to make sure that it gets that partner approval. Um, and also, most importantly, use it as a secondary device. So you have a switch on uh, an Akara button maybe that actually activates your light still. Um, but this can be used as a coffee table device uh, for a bit of fun maybe, if you want to um, have sounds coming out of it at certain um, um, when it hits certain sides or taps, etc., but also can control what you need to do. Think about user cases. Thanks for watching. Um, please like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and uh, wait until the next video. 